Mexican president-elect Claudia Sheinbaum has drawn massive media attention as the first woman and the first Jewish person elected to the top office. But when she takes office on October 1st, she is going to have to hit the ground running. One of her top challenges will be dealing with the United States and with the one issue that's engulfed U.S. politics, migration. Sheinbaum won the election on June 2nd in a massive landslide, promising to keep President Andrés Manuel López Obrador's policies. López Obrador has essentially become the continent's top migration cop. He's been cutting deals with both the Biden and Trump administration to limit how many migrants move north and to take some third country nationals back when they're expelled from the United States. So similarities aside, López Obrador spent his first two years fielding Trump's threats and the next four years talking it out with Biden. In a nutshell, Trump threatened López Obrador to cooperate or else. Biden, he used more orthodox diplomatic means. Now, we'll never know if Trump would have followed up on his threats. The pandemic came and migration basically froze. Sheinbaum has said she wants the United States to invest serious money in development programs in Mexico South and throughout Central America. She wants to take the jobs to would-be migrants and not the other way around. That pitch might fly with the second Biden administration. But if Trump is elected again, Sheinbaum will almost certainly have to change her tune. But in the broader U.S.-Mexico relationship, migration is just the tip of the iceberg. For starters, the two countries have the single biggest bilateral trade relationship on Earth. In 2023, the two countries traded just under $800 billion. It's still short of the $817 billion of commerce between the United States and China in 2018, but U.S.-China trade has since dropped under $600 billion. U.S.-Mexico trade numbers are expected to keep going up as companies keep focus on nearshoring. That's setting up shop in Mexico instead of Asia. That sounds like great news for Sheinbaum. But there are a series of bubbling trade disputes, many of them a direct consequence of López Obrador policies that promise to strain relations between the two countries. And global financial markets, they aren't thrilled at her win either. Sheinbaum's landslide was huge. She basically beat the opposition candidate by a two to one ratio. López Obrador's political party, Morena, also won big, and it might even get a constitutional supermajority. And that's what markets don't like. López Obrador wants to pass a series of constitutional reforms to weaken the judiciary before he steps down. And that makes investors jittery. Since Sheinbaum's election, the peso has dropped from 17 per dollar to 1840 per dollar. That'll make Mexican imports cheaper in the United States, but it'll make US-made goods more expensive for Mexican families. That could drive more migration, as it has in the past. Financial concerns aside, Sheinbaum will also have to juggle bilateral cooperation on organized crime, including human drug and arms trafficking. How she juggles everything from October 1st onward will almost certainly have an effect on the U.S. election in November. And the results of that election will determine if she needs to prepare for Trump or for Biden.